for creative people, and this is true for people in general, but it's really important for creative people, is that if you want to be creative, which is very, very dangerous and very, very um, unlikely to succeed, although absolutely necessary if you happen to be high in openness, is that you should organize the rest of your life, except for your creative endeavors, in a pretty traditional and conservative manner, if you can do that, because what that does is buttress you against the unexpected and give you some stability on many, you know, along many of the potential dimensions of your life. And that frees you up to take larger risks in the creative domain. Now, it's hard for creative people to do that because they're sort of blasting out, you know, laterally in all directions simultaneously. But you exhaust yourself that way and you also risk scattering yourself. Um, Louis Watterson here had, had a question. How would you suggest someone who's a jack of all trades and master of none conduct themselves? Well, you're probably high in openness, high in creativity. And one of the dangers of being high in creativity, especially if you're also high in neuroticism, is that it's hard for creative people to catalyze an identity because they're basically Pan-like, you know, like Peter Pan or like, or like Pan, which means everything. The god of the forest is the god of everything to some degree. And the problem with being everything is that you're also nothing at the same time because you never specialize. And so I would say that if you're, I, I think that being a jack of all trades is pretty damn useful, but I would also say that it's really necessary to buckle down and find one primary mode of discipline. And Jack or Louis, if you can't figure out what you should do, then guess, just pick something that you think that you could hit hard and concentrate on. You don't have to be perfect at it. You don't even have to get it right. But pick something rather than nothing or pick something rather than all things. And then set yourself to master that because, you know, you need to have a, uh, um, a discipline, a primary discipline. It's absolutely necessary to succeed in life. Now, once you have a primary discipline, then you can branch out and, and become a multiplicity in your disciplined approach and then you're absolutely bloody unstoppable but you really need that initial disciplinary routine you know this is something Nietzsche knew up uh, knew very well um, he said for example I just wrote about this today that um, it was the long unfreedom of the of Europe's subjugation to the dogmatic structures of the Catholic Church that ennobled the European mind and gave it the capacity to widely range that it eventually developed but it was that initial subjugation that initial voluntary slavery that produced the discipline that produced the spirit that could then go out and do other things and, and it's really really useful to subjugate yourself something to something voluntarily you know I think that's partly why it's useful to practice a religious faith um, because you subject yourself to a disciplinary structure that way and you might think well that's all oppressive and all of that and of course that's true but it also makes you disciplined and once you're disciplined like you're you're like a sharpened sword man like a well-tempered blade and then you can go out there and operate in the world so and if you haven't found your passion then I would say well don't wait around till you find the damn thing because you may never find it is pick something and focus on it you know and if you move strongly and forthrightly towards it for a number of months at least or even a number of years and then you find well that wasn't the thing for you it isn't going to be a waste anyways because most of the time the pursuit of any disciplined knowledge pays off even if it doesn't pay off in the way that you initially expect so Alex Bernstein said